Find part of a group using unit fractions. We're at lesson 8.8. .8. A fraction can tell us how many are in a part of a group. We use the denominator to find how many smaller equal groups that will divide the total number in the group into. So what fraction of these dots are red? What fraction is red? We divide it into two smaller equal groups because the denominator is a two. We see that one of the two groups are red, so half are red. We use the numerator to find how many groups to count. So what fraction is red? One of the two groups. One red group to count out of two total groups. One of two equal groups are red, so half are red. We can read it as half are red, like this. Dave bought a bouquet of 12 flowers for his mother. One fourth of them are red. How many of the flowers are red? We can use or draw 12 counters. We'll use that for the 12 flowers. And because we need to find one fourth, the denominator tells us to make four equal groups. And we put a counter one at a time in each group until we get to 12. We learned about making equal groups in lesson 6.2, which is linked in the description if you need it. So we take turns putting a counter into each group until we use 12 counters. And remember, this denominator, the four, tells us we need four groups. We take turns putting counters in each group until we get to 12. That's one, two, three, four. And we keep doing this one at a time into each group until we get to 12. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. They kind of look like little faces, don't they? We count how many counters we have in one group. We have three. That means one fourth of 12 is equal to three. Now we can also look at this fraction as three twelfths. We have three counters and 12 in all, so one fourth is equal to three twelfths. These are equal fractions. They're called equivalent fractions, and we'll be talking about that some more when we get to chapter nine. So one fourth of 12 is equal to three. And we can relate this problem to division. Then we check it with multiplication because they are inverse operations. Division and multiplication are opposite operations. We know we had four groups. If he bought 12 flowers and one fourth were red, then that means one of the groups of flowers are red and we have three red flowers in that group. So we know one fourth of 12 is equal to three. And 12 divided by four is equal to three. We had 12 flowers. We divided it into four groups. There were three in each group. We can check it with multiplication. Three times four is equal to 12. So we know we have it right. So we can use the numerator and denominator in a fraction to find part of a group. First, the denominator on the bottom of the fraction tells us how many groups to divide the whole amount into. Then the numerator on top tells us how many of those groups to count or how many are in that one group. Bob planted 10 flowers and one fifth of them are blue. So how many of the flowers are blue? We use or draw a row of five counters. So we're gonna draw a row going across of five counters. And to find one fifth, we make five equal groups. That's a fifth, that's one fifth, that's one fifth, that's one fifth, and that's one fifth. See? So we're gonna draw a row of five counters going across. It's one, two, three, four, five. I don't have them all filled in all the way, do I? And then we do it again. 
we draw as many rows of five counters as we would need to until we have ten counters in all. So we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are two counters in one group. So one fifth of ten is equal to two. We can also say that there are two out of ten in all. So there's two tenths. And one fifth is equal to two tenths. They're equal fractions, they're equivalent fractions. So if Bob planted ten flowers and one fifth of them were blue, we see two were blue. One fifth of ten is equal to two. And 10 divided by 5 groups is equal to 2 in each group. And we can check it with multiplication. 2 times 5 is equal to 10. We count the number of counters in one group when the numerator is a 1. When the numerator of a fraction is a 1, the fraction is a unit fraction. We learned about that in Lesson 8.3. If we need to find one-third of nine, we know to put three groups because the denominator is a three. We put one in each group until we get to nine. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One of the groups, the numerator is a one, one of the groups has three, so we know one-third of nine is 3. Now here the denominator is a 4, so we made 4 groups. We need 1 fourth of 8. We're going to start putting counters one at a time, taking turns into the groups until we have 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And there's 2 in each group. We use one of the groups because the numerator is a 1, in one of the groups, there's two of them, so one-fourth of eight is two. For this one, we have one-seventh of fourteen. Because the denominator is a seven, we make seven groups, and we're going to start putting counters one at a time until we get to fourteen. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we go back again, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14. In one of the groups, we've got a 1 for a numerator. We can see there's two of them, so 1 seventh of 14 is a 2. Here we have 1 sixth of 18. The denominator is a 6, so we make 6 groups. We're going to put one at a time, going back and forth, taking turns until we do 18. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. In one of the groups, the numerator is a 1, there's three counters. So we know 1 6 of 18 is equal to 3. We use one of the groups because the numerator is a 1. What do you think would happen if it said, two sixths of 18 and the numerator was a two. What do you think we would do? Well, if it said that, then we would use the number of counters in two groups. Two sixths of 18 would be six, three plus three. So that's a little extra. We're talking about unit fractions right now. And remember, a unit fraction has a one for a numerator. One-sixth of the flowers that Sanjay planted were yellow. How many yellow flowers did Sanjay plant? So let's take a look at this frequency table. It tells us it's flowers planted. We have their names and the number of flowers they planted. And we need to find about Sanjay. And it says Sanjay planted 18 flowers. And we can draw counters and groups to solve this. One-sixth, we've got six here, 
That means we need six equal groups. The denominator tells us to make six equal groups. And we go back and forth taking turns, putting counters one at a time until we get to 18. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We can see there's 3 in one of the groups, so 1 sixth of 18 is equal to 3. We can look at it as division too. We've got 18 counters divided into six equal groups, there's three in each group. 18 divided by six is equal to three. And three times six is equal to 18. We can say one six is equal to three eighteenths. There's 18 counters in all. There's three in each group. We have 3 eighteenths in one group. And 1 6 and 3 eighteenths are equal fractions. They're equivalent fractions. 20 flower bulbs need to be planted. And Dave planted 1 fifth of the flower bulbs. Emma planted 1 fourth of the flower bulbs. Who planted more bulbs, Dave or Emma? We can find 1 fifth of 20 for Dave then count how many are in one group. It's got a five for a denominator, so we need five groups. And we keep putting counters one at a time until we get to 20. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And we can see in one group, there are four. So we know Dave planted four bulbs. Then we can find one fourth of 20 for Emma because Emma planted one fourth of the 20 bulbs. And then count how many are in one group. So because it's fourth, we have a four. That means we're gonna have four groups. And we keep going one at a time until we get to 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We can see in one group there are five. So that means Emma planted five bulbs. We needed to know who planted more bulbs, Dave or Emma? We can see Emma planted one more, didn't she? She planted five and he planted four. So this denominator was smaller and it made the number in each group more. Do you see that? So if Dave planted four bulbs and Emma planted five bulbs, how many bulbs still need to be planted? We add how many Dave and Emma planted Dave planted four, oops, and Emma planted five, and four plus five is equal to nine, isn't it? Then we subtract their sum, nine, from 20, and 20 minus nine is equal to 11. And we can check 20 minus nine is equal to 11 by using an inverse operation, addition. Remember, subtraction and addition are inverse operations. They're opposites. 11 plus 9 is equal to 20. So we know we got it right. There's still 11 bulbs left that need to be planted. So we can find part of a group using unit fractions because the denominator, the number on the bottom of the fraction, tells us how many groups we need. And we slowly put counters one at a time into each group until we've used the total amount and we use the amount that is in one group because a unit fraction has a one as a numerator, doesn't it? I hope you're having a really nice day and I'll see you for our next lesson, 8.9. We're gonna learn about word problem solving and how to find the whole group using unit fractions. I hope I'll see you there. Bye.